Well, I'm finally getting around to making the banana pudding, or ban or nanner pudding. That's what my cousin Tom says out in California. Anyway, I'm starting with these Nilla wafers and a little casserole dish. Sometimes I double it and make it double the size of this and use a great big casserole dish. And I'm just gonna do this. So to start with, we're just gonna do this. And then I'm kind of a stickler. I like to turn mine all the right way, this way down, the flat side down. And I cover the whole bottom of the pan that way. Okay, and then I'm just gonna come back. Well, for some reason, my camera just turned off. So I've started to peel another banana um, because I decided I do want to cover every cookie. Why not? We've got plenty of bananas that need to get eaten up before they go, go bad. So we're gonna put the bananas on here. Um, what else? Oh yeah. So my my son in the Philippines uh, got to feed a monkey a banana the other day, and he sent me a little video of it. It was really cute. That little monkey. It was somebody's pet over there, and they kept it in, like in the yard, in in some kind of little enclosure. But it would come down to reach out, like he reached out and gave it like this little banana, and it scurried back up and was eating its little banana and then later on he came and gave him a peanut or some kind of nut it was really cute he was happy he was i could tell that he was happy he's like oh it's a little it's like almost like baby talk it's a little it's a little monkey eating a eating a nut or something it was really cute. i was glad to get that video um so now what we're gonna do okay let me let me turn you around and show you what we've got so far of course, I've got my towel here. Okay, so this is it so far. It's not rocket science. Oh. <laughs> so we have a family member that actually is a rocket sci scientist. Um, and his daughter, Rhonda, also has, she's my cousin, and she, she also has a YouTube channel. She had one before me. And then she kind of, sorry, I'm making all this racket with this. It's probably driving people crazy. She had one, and then I guess she quit for a little while. But then when I started my YouTube channel up, she's she's now do, making them again, too. And she's hilarious. She cracks me up. Her name is Rhonda. Mimo's Wit and Wisdom, I think. I'll write it, I'll write it on here because you guys would get a kick out of her, I think. She's a... She's a good old country girl. She's a caretaker. She's she's very good at taking care of people, and I'm glad that she has this little outlet. I'm glad I have this little outlet, too. But um, I think there's times when she can't leave the house and whatnot, and so this is a good thing. So I would love it if you guys that support me and subscribe to me, if you could swing on over and say hi to Rhonda. And tell her her cousin Kim sent you. That would be that would be awesome. And she might just make you crack a smile. She's pretty funny. She always has been. She's always been the funny the funny one in the family, I think. Okay, so now we've got another layer of cookies. So now it's time for you know what? Another layer of bananas. Oh, I was going to tell you that I, I usually would request this if my, if I was getting my own request for a dessert. My granny, boy, she, it, it's really a wonder I'm, I didn't grow up a lot, a lot bigger than I was because she was always cooking and it was always so good. But she, I liked her, I liked this, well, I liked everything she made, but she also made pies. She made buttermilk pie, chess pie, chocolate pie. Chocolate pie was my brother's favorite pretty sure. 
cobblers, all kinds of cobblers, apple dumplings. Now that's my brother's wife's favorite, apple dumplings. I never was a big fan of the apple dumpling. But my sister-in-law um, is actually the reason why we have all of Granny's recipes all written down in, in a nice little book because one Christmas before Granny passed, she, um, well, I, I think it was a while before she passed, she went over and was um, asking Granny all of her recipes and things and writing, writing them down. And <laughs> the story goes that Granny was like, I don't want to say her name in case she doesn't want her name said on here, but that my brother's wife sure must not know how to cook anything because she's all the time over um, asking asking her how to make things. So this is my, my wonderful granny. She was beautiful. She had that jet black hair um, forever. She she passed at 84, and I believe and it, it just had that pretty little... Um, gray or silver just you know right around the edges but she was just beautiful and we are so thankful that we have all these recipes we have a dessert section we have meats okay let's see we've got meats and poultry breads vegetables and desserts and we're on the dessert one right now and so yeah my my wonderful sister-in-law put this all together for us and we are so thankful for that so I'll write this recipe down for you guys, or you could just pause it and and look at it from what I just showed you if you if it was in the camera. Well, anyway, so my brother and sister-in-law are actually they they don't know this, but they're actually kind of a little bit of the reason why I've decided I decided to do this YouTube channel. They're like, no, we're not. We never told you to go do a YouTube channel. I don't know if they even see this, but um, anyway, I was inspired because they started a brand new business at this at this stage of life. And in fact, he's older than he's he's older than me by about I think five years. And at this stage in life, they decided to open. They'd always wanted to open a restaurant, and they did. They came up with a an idea for a restaurant and um, did such a great job and are doing such a great job with that. I mean, <laughs> that takes a lot of guts to go into something like that. You know, I mean, having to learn everything about that business. And I thought, wow, what can I do now that I've raised my babies? That's always been my big impetus and my big purpose in life is it was you know making sure that I did my best raising these babies which which I did and I gave it my all and then I'm like well now now what now what do I do what do I do with all this knowledge I mean I could I suppose I could have I could open a daycare or clean houses or something like that but you know I don't really have a a marketable skill because I've never had to work outside the home and um, I thought well I need to do something and I know this isn't really work and I'm sure I will never earn any money off of it but it'd be kind of cool if I could someday I mean I've never been a breadwinner that would kind of be neat to be able to contribute a little bit Maybe make up enough money, you know, maybe like to travel around and things like that. Help be able to have some money, you know, to help out your, to be a, you know, a stopgap for your children in case, you know, they ever encounter troubles. So anyway, that's, um, this is where we're at. Um, it's getting pretty high, so I think that's probably pretty good. So I think I've gotten two bananas. No, not even two. I mean, I still have half. So it was one and a half. One and a half bananas. Somebody will eat that. And um, then if you saw, I also stuck them around the sides too. Because we like it. Especially my mom likes a lot of the cookies. So we like it good and cookie. Cookie full. 
cookie full. I bet you've never heard that word. I've never heard that word either. I just made it up. Um, let's see. So now, we just let that sit and wait. And I'm going to get rid of So this is how many I had left. Somebody will have a little snack with that. And this banana. It's a Saturday. Everybody's kind of scattered. So I'm, even though I started out my YouTube channel saying that I'm an empty nester, I'm actually really not yet for part of the year because part of the year from January to end of July, my, my middle twins go to college. And then from August to January, they're here and they're, they're building houses. That's, that's their job. And um, so, I'm not a, really an empty nester yet, which is nice. I'm glad. But, let's see. So, now I'll have this as maybe this established channel here to occupy my time once, once I am truly empty. <laughs> my husband and I were laughing the other day. We said... And now the the new wife also they 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 have a a little apartment at our house that has its own entrance and everything, and so they're here too. She's here too. So she and my son that's married, uh, Jake, um, they 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 all live here, which is really nice. And it gives me a good chance to get to know her too, and her me. She I don't know how you say that. It's nice for us to get to know each other and all that. Um, let's see. So now I'm to the pudding. I've got to stop rambling now because now I have to pay attention. So we have, she calls for five egg yolks and then we put, so I'm going to put the five egg yolks in here and I'm going to put the, the egg whites into this one for the meringue. And this is just my, my stand mixer. It's huge. I have meringue anxiety. Sometimes it doesn't set up. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to need a measuring utensil. Hold up. Okay, so I'm back, and I've gotten the quarter cup measure and the tablespoon. And we're going to separate. Do you guys want to watch me separate the eggs? I don't know. It's just pressure. I'm scared. I saw on a cooking show one time, they said not to cook, not to crack it on the edge because then that causes the, the yolk to get broken. And if you get any yolk in these egg whites, your meringue is not going to be fluffy and nice. So we're going to crack it on the side. Uh-oh. Making a mess already. Okay. So you can do this. You can just go back and forth. I'm always afraid that this shell is going to puncture my yolk. I'm telling you, I got some yolk and egg white anxiety. Okay, that's pretty good. We got a lot of the yolk, the egg white out of there. And then we're going to put the yolk into here. That's one. You know what? I'm going to lay them out so I don't get lose count. One, two, three, four, five. I always put one extra just for good measure. Cause I didn't, I don't know how large her eggs were or anything. I don't think you can go wrong putting one extra in. You guys had no idea. I was just so good at this, did you? That one broke really nice. Just all the way around. It must have had a fault line or something.
plus that extra egg gives us just a little bit more egg white for the meringue. Uh-oh. Can I do it in this little bitty shell? Yeah, I did. I can't think of anything. Can you believe it? I can't think of anything to talk about. I guess we'll just be quiet and cook. We can do that. Who do y'all like to watch on, if you guys like cooking and stuff, who do you like to watch on the Food Channel? Food TV. It's been a while since I've watched watched it I used to watch it every Saturday morning every Saturday not morning but afternoon I think might have been morning on Saturdays with my granny I would go up to her house she was just right next door so I would just run up there which was lovely and um, I would watch cooking shows with her and then later on I would watch I remember my dad and I would watch Bob Vila, Bob Vila? is that how you say it yeah, this old house or that Yankee workshop where he he built things, but he didn't use like power tools. He would he did it like the old timey way. We liked that kind of stuff. Okay, so now I have my egg yolks in here, and I have a pot. This is going to be my double boiler because I don't have an actual double boiler. So I have my pot of water on the stove and it's already at a low boil, just waiting for this pot to come over there because we're gonna cook it over there on our makeshift double boiler. So to the egg yolks, it calls for three quarters of a cup of sugar. And before I ever put it on the heat, I like to have it really mixed up well because I've done it before just you know, with kids running around and trying to do everything in a hurry. I've mixed this in and done this stuff while it's on the heat and it scrambled the, the eggs and ruined it. So once I get the sugar in, I just whisk it. My, my poor granny never had a whisk. I feel sorry for her, because I love my whisk. That's the best way to get the lumps out of your gravy. I guess she was so good, she just never had lumps in the gravy. We just used a wooden spoon to make the gravy with Granny. So look at there, no lumps, it's all nice and smooth. Okay, so, and then it calls for a large can of evaporated milk and then a half can of, and then refill it, like a half can of milk and a half can of water, but I just go ahead and put two cans of this evaporated milk because it's a little easier and why not? So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that in first so it doesn't slosh around quite so much when I put the next one in. Oh, I've messed up a little bit. I'm sorry. <sighs> Forgot about the three tablespoons of flour. And that's kind of hard to mix in now at this stage. So now I'm gonna have to get something, a little bowl and then pour, just hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put, what I, what I should have done is I should have put the three tablespoons of flour in with the sugar and then whisked it really good and then added the eggs and stuff to it. Oh, my battery's low. Um, because then, it, th when you mix the sugar with the flour, it breaks up the flour really fine and it doesn't clump up on you. So, and when she said a tablespoon, I don't remember ever seeing an actual tablespoon at my granny's kitchen. So I think she just used a big old spoon like that you would eat soup with or something. So I, I do like a big, see that? It's, it's a tablespoon, but it's like heaping. Because I think that she, she didn't really measure. I mean, she just threw it in there. One, two, three. And this is going to make sure that our pudding is not runny. Okay, so there's that. And we're done with this. So I'm going to just go ahead and use it to scoop into a little bit of this 
liquid and then we're going to get it smooth before we incorporate it back in here. It's going to be a lot easier to get it smooth in this little bowl. Sorry about that noise. Okay, I got to get back in my seat. I am the lazy cook. If there's something I can do and still sit down, I'm good with that. You know what wouldn't hurt? And what would help to mix this up a little better? It's just a little bit more sugar. And that's not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna make it a little better. Cause we did add that extra egg. So probably a good thing to add a little extra sugar. Okay, it's, it's gumming up. It's not good. We're just gonna go ahead and add some of this second can of milk. Over here. Okay, I don't know. Do you wanna see that? <laughs> okay, but all good, all this good food is so fattening. But I don't care. I grew up on it, and I can't, I can't not have it. Okay, so it, it got really nice and smooth. See, look at this. All right, disaster averted. All right. Now this is going to help thicken up our pudding. This see, so this is really you can you can hear how thin it is and it's about to get thinner cuz I'm pouring all this other milk in. So it starts out really runny and thin. Hopefully that when that when we cook it it's going to start to thicken up. And then what we're going to do is okay. Mix in the do double boiler. Well, I don't mix it. I already, I'm telling you, you got to mix it before you put it on the double boiler. And so what, I think maybe she meant stir it in the double boiler. You do have to stand there and stir it quite a bit until it starts to get thick. And then you add three quarters of a stick of butter, but I add the whole, the whole stick of butter. And then we're going to, you know, beat it up with this whisk really well. And then we're gonna pour it over our cookies and bananas. So I'll see you in a minute. It's just starting to come back up to the boil. And here's my my bowl of delicious pudding. We're gonna add, I don't remember if I said, but we're gonna add vanilla later. Sorry. Okay, you're just gonna have to look at the pudding. So at the very, after we turn the heat off, we're going to add a cap full. I always add a cap full. It says a teaspoon or half, I don't know. I add a cap full of vanilla at the very end. So we're just making sure it's not sticking to the side and that it's not lumpy at all. And if you see a little bit of flour in there that's not mixed up, then you, you get it whisk, whisked in. Okay, so it's been about six minutes and it's still not very thick. It's starting to thicken up around the walls of the bowl. So we just have to keep cooking it. It will thicken. You just have to cook it a little longer. And I had also, I wanted to come back and, okay, I forgot to put a pinch of salt in this. <laughs> in it. So I just, I just put some in the palm of my hand maybe maybe about like that and dump it in I told <laughs> I told one of my daughters-in-law the other day to put a pinch of salt in something and she did not understand me I don't she just didn't understand what I meant and she said something really I I'm not sure but I swear she said something really cute like I pinch it I'm supposed to pinch it. We had a lot going on. We were cooking and had people coming over. And so, you know, there was a little bit of chaos. So I'm not 100% sure she said that, but I, I'm i pretty sure she said. What do you mean? I pinch it before I put it in? I'm like, oh, here, let me just show you. However much you can pinch of the salt is a pinch of salt. And I think it's with these three fingers. I could be wrong. But you need that salt. It just makes the sweet taste so much better. So it's starting. I'm getting a little bit more 
resistance every time I do this right here. It doesn't sound as liquid either. You can hear it. So pretty soon I'm going to put this this stick of butter. I like Land O'Lakes. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, my granny always said to use white lily flour. She really liked white lily. If you, if you have access to white lily flour, that's the best flour, apparently. So that's what I always buy now. That and Domino's sugar, because that's what granny always bought. really it's starting to get thicker so that's awesome so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put this whole stick of butter in here which is amazing okay so now that's just gonna melt down in here and then we're gonna oh and I went ahead and finished off that banana I sliced it on there and I added the rest of the cookies because I thought nobody else that no no kid came down to eat the remainder of those things so it's it's in the pudding so they'll eat it in the pudding i think they'll be really excited when they realize that i'm down here cooking this okay this is getting good and thick i'm just going to turn the heat down because i don't really want it to get any thicker than this and it will it will get a little bit thicker still butters on okay what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it off so that I can add this vanilla and it's got to be pure vanilla extract not vanilla flavoring so I just put a whole a whole cap full which is I guess about a teaspoon and then whatever spills on me I go ahead and there's a little trick ladies your men will think you smell good if you do this they have to come in when they give you a hug. Get them to give you a hug. Just that power of uh, attraction is going to happen if they like sweet stuff. And mine does. So he likes it when I smell sweet. gonna pour it over and I need a big little spatula because that's some that's some good goodies down in there and we want to make sure we cover all the cookies or they won't get soft like they're supposed to. And this looks like a good one. You know, sometimes things don't just turn out just, just right, but this one, this one looks like it's a good one. It's really good. And really pretty easy for something that's just like, you know, completely homemade except for the, the cookies. feel kind of bad because my boys that are out of the country would sure love to have some of this right about, right about now. Maybe one of my friends in Brazil will make this for my, my boy that's there, for my Samuel. Um, I don't know. I don't, the one friend I have in the Philippines, I don't think that they're near Eli right now. Okay, so now it's time for the meringue, and I have the six egg whites in here, and I'm going to get them uh, light and frothy, and then I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar. And we hold our breath. So that's pretty good. My 
grandmother never called it vanilla flavoring. It was always just you add the flavoring, which I thought was kind of cute. There was only one flavor, apparently, and it was vanilla. And I'm okay with that because I love vanilla. Okay, so is this going to work? I'm also trying to charge my phone. Okay, so now we're just going to get this on top of here even, as evenly as we can. I hope so. Well, you can just, you want to seal it in, seal all the stuff in. So I like to try to make sure it goes all the way to the edge, but I don't want it to really overhang the edge because then it's, it might burn. We don't want that. We don't want a burnt nana pudding. So here is the final product. It is a delicious banana pudding. You'll never have any any better banana pudding, I promise. And it's all from my, my wonderful granny. Love you, granny. See y'all.